Hi, this is Ken of Wrist Innovations. This is part six of a six part series on the table saw. In this video, we will cover sheet goods, how to rip and cross cut large sheets of plywood, as well as how to break them down into smaller pieces using either a portable saw or a track saw and the advantages of a track saw. So let's get started. Let's talk sheet goods. A four by eight foot sheet of plywood weighs about 60 pounds and an MDF weighs about 90 pounds. So these are really large and bulky things to be moving around in your shop. In fact, I can't even get them into my vehicle, so I have to have the local lumber yard rip them in half for me. So even a two foot by eight foot sheet takes up a lot of space in the shop. So let me show you what I mean. So in order to rip it, to show the amount of room you need, you need eight feet as part of the out feed. You have your table saw, and now you have to have all this support and room for the infeed side of the piece. In fact, I have a homemade support piece down here. Another concern I have is that I'm so far away from the on-off switch of the table saw in case I needed to turn it off in a hurry. In fact, I think I can even hear an echo, 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 echo. Let's talk about the table saw setup. So I have a finished blade, which is the 80 tooth alternating top bevel design. I have my blade guard, my riving knife. I also have stock roller guides to help secure the piece against the fence, especially being so large. And I also have my push block ready for when I get to the end of the cut. Okay, once you turn the table saw on, I position myself so I'm to the left of the workpiece and not directly in behind it. So I'm going to be pushing with my left hand, but carefully because I don't want to be twisting the board which will pull it away from the fence. That is the biggest challenge here being so far away. And then I'm also be using my right arm hand to be pushing it forward. So it's that kind of a motion. So as I get near to the end of the cut, I grab my push block to push the workpiece the rest of the way. The question is if this is a good setup to use the fence to cross cut this particular piece of wood. The dimensions of the piece is around 12 inches in this direction and it's about 6 inches away from the blade. In my particular recommendation would be not to use the fence because my concern is that as I would be pushing this piece through there's a good chance because of the length of the board that it could rotate and potentially cause a kickback. For this piece I would rather use a cross cut sled or a sliding table attachment to my table saw. So we should talk about the elephant in the room and that is what is this monstrosity that I have attached to the table saw. This is a sliding table attachment which allows me to cut really large sheets of plywood full, full eight foot for instance by two foot or more that I can lay down on this table and particularly do really uh, safe cross cuts. Tell me more, sheet goods man. So rather than struggle with trying to cut large sheets of plywood on your table saw, I suggest that you consider breaking down the plywood into smaller pieces. And one option is to consider using a portable circular saw. You can mount a straight edge, clamp that down to the piece of plywood, and then run the saw down against the track. The thing I don't like about this, there's really two things. One is the amount of the blade that's exposed during the cut, and I'll show a close-up in a minute. The second thing is these are notorious for creating a lot of sawdust. The way the shroud is made and designed, it doesn't really capture much of the sawdust, and I would not want to use it in an enclosed workshop. This is what I mean by the exposure of the blade. The whole area here is open and you have the cutting edge right here with these teeth that are exposed. And because this is all open, it does a lousy job for dust collection. Now I think I've led a full life without the need to have a track saw in it. Until recently. Yes, I've gone ahead and made the plunge for a track saw by Festool. Now, there are other lower cost brands out there, 
but let's focus on the advantages of the Traxol technology in general compared to a standard portable circular saw. Number one is you can see that the blade is completely retracted into the body of the saw when you're not using it. Once you pull the trigger, the blade comes down and there's an actual little anti-kickback feature that pops out as well. And so when you're actually doing the cut, there's virtually no exposure of the blade, which to me is superior by far compared to the circular saw blade here to the right. And again, because of this, in total, this total enclosure, this has a vastly superior dust collection feature compared to the circular saw. Now the track saw provides a superior quality cut versus the circular saw here on the right. And the main reason, one of them is, that they have a complementary specific track that works with the track saw itself. And I'll explain some of the advantages of that versus just using a straight edge for the circular saw. So there are three important features of the track and saw combination. The first is there is this raised profile that is extruded into the track and that mates with this groove that's in the bottom of the saw. And there are little cams here that allow you to adjust the amount of lateral movement this way so that you have a very nice smooth action cutting. The second thing is that there are these anti-slip rubber strips that go down the length of the track. And when you drop this down onto your workpiece, it really holds it snug to the point where many times you don't even need to use clamps to hold the track in place. The third really important feature is this sacrificial plastic strip that's on the edge of the track. That acts as a zero clearance throw plate like you would have on a table saw. Because when you first buy this, this plastic is wider. And then when you cut this for the very first time, you're cutting through the plastic, just like a zero clearance throw plate. And so this really helps with avoiding tear out, especially for cross cutting. Here's a close up of the portable circular saw and you can see the tear out because as the saw blade rotates out of the wood, there is no support of the wood fibers. Next, here is the close up of the track saw and you can see there is little to no tear out because the wood fibers are supported on both sides of the blade as it rotates out of the wood. And in this diagram, the saw splinter guard on the left and the track splinter guard on the right fully support the wood fibers. To rip sheet goods using the track saw, I place a one inch thick rigid foam on the work surface to protect it from the saw blade. Then it's just a matter of ripping the workpiece. For repeated rip cuts of the same width, Parallel guides provide increased accuracy and speed. The small cam can be adjusted to your desired dimension. For cross cuts, using the track saw, this 90 degree accessory easily attaches to the track and you're able to perform perpendicular cuts every time. Another nice feature that I didn't even mention is that this is a battery powered saw and when I have it hooked up to the dust extractor through a Bluetooth connection, it will actually turn the dust extractor on when I turn the saw on. And you can see when I was cutting this, there was very little, if any, sawdust that you could see during the cut. Since you've made it this far in the video, I hope that you've enjoyed it. And if you have, I would really appreciate it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. And if you haven't seen the previous videos of this series, you can find their links below. In a future video, I'll compare the accuracy of my table saw with the combination of my track saw and this custom built multifunction table I built. And I think you'll be surprised at the results. I'll post a link in the description below when that video is available. In the meantime, I'm going to do a deep dive on push sticks, push blocks, and feather boards. So please click my link.